I'm very excited to welcome Duncan Skiles. Hey. 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 Hello. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Good to be here. It's very exciting to have you here because, mm. as I alluded to in the introduction, I really enjoyed The Clove Hitch Killer. It was one of the most exciting films that I saw last year, so I'm very keen to talk with you. Well, thank you very much for saying that, and I'm keen to... Uh, share whatever insight I may have to offer with you. I mean, that that movie for me was, uh, it's one of those movies that it finishes and then you just sit there in silence for a good half hour just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> good. Uh, that's better than um, some of the reactions that I got. The, the opening night was at the IFC Theater in the Village in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And I was under the impression that it was going to be like a real premiere, but it, it was sort of like this tiny screening room that they give to things that they have a mandatory theatrical release on. So it was like, I don't know, there were maybe like a dozen people in there and I was really high, and <laughs> which was a mistake. And I was with my cousin and the composer and the composer's parents, God bless them. They're really nice people, nice folks, good friends of mine, um, but they, they just did not get the movie at all. Wow. And okay. the first thing they said to me at the end when they came out of the theater was, his dad said, wow, another one in the can. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> but I'm glad that it uh, has uh, been effective on you. I was going for something very specific, and I think that it resonates with a specific frequency on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, like, I just love more deliberate filmmaking and, and something that doesn't really follow a kind of templated genre. And, and just the fact that, the characters were just so well developed and so kind of fleshed out. You just don't normally see that in a horror or a thriller movie. Mm -hmm. And so you you were so much more invested. Yeah, yeah, that was definitely my goal was to create a world that felt fleshed out so that when dark stuff started to happen, it felt especially unsettling. Yeah. Because the world the world was supposed to feel normal and and real. And that's one of the benefits of nobody wanting to make your film is that you have a lot of time to develop it mm, sure. and continue to improve upon it and keep adding stuff and deepening it. It really shows. Yeah. I mean, the thing that I really wanted to ask you about was the structure of the film, because in much the same way that the style of the film, the way the film is lit, the way the film is performed avoids all genre conventions, as Dan mentions, the structure of the film completely plays them because it feels as though the second and third acts have been reversed because you get to watch I don't want to give away too much about the movie. Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you get to see sort of what would in another movie be played as the climax of the movie, a final reveal leading to a climax that's really unsettling and terrifying. Yeah. But that's actually the end of Act 2. And I don't want to give anything away, but somebody walks into a door frame and I literally sat upright and said, mm. holy shit! <laughs> because yeah. I was just so bound up in the, how tense the scene was and I did not expect what happened to happen. Great. And then you spend the third act unraveling that and going back and figuring out how you got there. Yeah, yeah. And I was just amazed by this puzzle box construction that you had going there. Mm. Great, I'm glad it worked for you like that because that developed organically through just telling the story to people as I was working it out in my head and I wanted you know, to get to a certain point where the tension was just unbearable. And in order to do that, I kind of had to get rid of the main character and just follow the dad. And so put people in this like weird state of mind of like, where is this movie going? And that was somewhat inspired by Psycho, the way that they get rid of the main character 45 minutes in. Yeah. Mm. And um, the liberating feeling that that gives you as a filmmaker and an audience member of when a movie just kind of like untethers and goes in a different direction. And then when I was telling it to people, it got to that point as I was telling it where I would say and then behind him in the doorway dot 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 and everybody would flip out <laughs> and um, so I knew that that was going to work but I also knew that the story is about the son and it's about like his emotional journey to getting to the point that he's at at the end of the movie and so I wanted to tell it from his perspective as well so that structure was built in to the script from the early stages when the editors first tried it 
they did a script cut, which was as in that structure. And then they did a linear cut where they tried cross cutting the dad and the son's perspective because mm. we just weren't sure that it was going to work. Mm. And I'm still not sure it's done totally correctly because it, I mean, I screened the movie 50 times and I never figured out a way to like accelerate it or if it needed to be accelerated. Cause I feel like if the movie ever drags, it drags in that point because we know where it's going to go. But I never figured out how to condense that. And I always just justified it to myself by saying, like, look, the movie is about this kid. You need to see the steps that he goes through to get to that point. Mm. You know, at a certain point, I was just like, fuck it. You know, I'm making this movie. (laughs) I can make it however I want to make it, right? Because I'm tired of trying to make movies like I think they're supposed to be made. And it was also an homage to Back to the Future 2, which I've always thought was amazing, (laughs) the way that you get to see Ah, Back to the Future 1 from somebody else's perspective. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I get what you're saying about it, it possibly slows down at that point. Mm. But then you you start to realize the film isn't necessarily about the thrill ride of what's going to happen next. You know what's going to happen next. The film is about why it's going to happen. Yeah. And if you're stuck with one character for another 20 minutes, Charlie Plummer is not a bad choice of person mm. to be True. following. And Madison Beatty as well. I mean, they're both amazing. They did a great job. Yeah, I don't think it's dull. Good, I'm glad. <laughs> I'll just have you be my uh, advocate for any negative criticism that comes my way. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not what Conrad thinks. <laughs> <laughs> 